this issue of whether mortgages are going to be secured and whether the government's going to play a role or whether the private sector, which got us into this mess to begin with, I mean, make no mistake about it, wasn't FHA or Fannie or government-sponsored enterprises leading the way into the subprime abyss. It was independent mortgage companies with the support of Wall Street who used unsuspecting investors, unions, pension funds, even governments from other nations, used their money to buy mortgages that were crap, that the investment banks knew were crap, that the brokers and lenders knew were crap, all to make fees and money. And, and Fannie and Freddie then eventually, once they lost a lot of the business, a lot of business, finally went into the subprime field. We're now going to end Fannie and Freddie, which since the 30s have been helping people be homeowners in this country, and Freddie since 1970, they've done a pretty good job. We actually have great home ownership rates compared to most nations. We're about to do away with them. And where are we going to put the business? We're going to put it in the hands of the very industry that, yeah, that led us into this yeah. abyss and create an insurance fund for them to be at which obligates the government because we'd backstop this insurance fund to be on the hook now for the big banks. But what we're doing now is we're basically closing the window for opportunity to build wealth the way most people in this country do it. They need to get and should get responsible mortgages. We're not talking about making bad loans to anybody or loans that are unsustainable. And frankly, that was outlawed under Dodd-Frank. They don't do it through the stock market. That's the purview of a handful of people. Yeah, everybody's got a little stock in something. You know, bought some stock in Apple. You know, well, whatever. The majority of people's wealth is in their home. That's and right. And so when you talk about a country that's already steeped in economic inequality, we're going to further exacerbate that. Absolutely. Absolutely. The Dow is terrific. Been doing better than it ever has in the history of our nation. And how many people so actually somebody's getting very in the, rich in the stock market? Exactly. What is it like? Seventy percent, eighty percent of Americans don't own stock. It's only if know? they do, they they own very little. Yeah. yeah it's actually a really recent uh, report on um, income inequality and wealth inequality, and it actually said that out of the stock market, the gains are actually held by so. 80% of the actual gains and profits in the stock market are held by 5% of the population yeah. in the United States. Unbelievable. So, you know, really the majority of the, the wealth that's actually being accrued right now on Wall Street is actually going to a very, very small segment of the society. And that's the, that's the portion of society that actually already has an incredible amount of needs. Right now, the system is being redesigned by Corker and Warner and others to basically raise the bar substantially for people to be able to enter home ownership. Corker Warner's bill eliminates, it doesn't modify it, it eliminates the affordable housing goals of Fannie and Freddie. So when the Wall Street firms take over, they won't have the same obligation that the government-sponsored enterprises do. So if they want to just make loans, uh, mortgages to uh, middle-income and upper-income people, um, that's fine. If they want to not worry about whether working-class people are getting mortgages, that's fine too, because there won't be any obligation for those enterprises to have to fulfill a goal of making sure that working class people have an opportunity to become homeowners. I think it's kind of like a modern Marie Antoinette sort of scenario where it's like instead let of them eat cake. instead of let them eat cake, it's let them rent. Let them rent. Right. Let them rent. Right? Where have we that's, heard that that's before? That's his favorite term. Oh my we God. just made his day. You know, it's funny. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, you're, you're definitely on this stuff because Bernanke wrote a speech in which, after this crisis, in which he basically said, you know, we really need to uh, to accept the fact that there's just a lot of people who shouldn't be homeowners, they should be renters. And that's when I was saying, let them eat rent. So, Mitria, what do you see as the way forward? How do we remedy the crisis? How do we solve it? How do we solve the crisis? I know you have the solution. Well, <laughs> you know, if I did, <laughs> I'd call us an yes, tell me. Morning. Yes. That's right, I tell you. Is there a bill, though, that's out there that's being proposed that you think really has some solid... You know what, I think... There, no, there is no bill. No. And I think one of the things that we've been doing at NCRC yeah. is we've really been very adamant um, with members of Congress, and particularly the chairman of the Senate Banking Committee, Senator Johnson, and the ranking member, Senator Crapo, to actually take the time to enact responsible legislation about the future of, of housing finance. Um, one thing is I think you can't do a piecemeal approach. That is, if you're going to address the, the GSEs, then you have to also look at how, how at what role FHA plays in that. You have to look at all of the other standards. You have to actually allow 
the market to actually settle and take place and see what happens as a result of Dodd-Frank's enactments and the qualified mortgage rule and the qualified residential mortgage rule. There are a lot of changes that have been put into place that make the market much safer that are just now going to take effect in this year, in fact, next week. Right. So, I mean, I think one of the things is to see what that what happens around those things. Um, and you know, John always says that we, we're, we're rushing to judgment. Everybody's in a hurry, um, and and he's right. Particularly with GSE reform, we're in a hurry, and we know that we had a financial crisis. And our response to that is to say, well, you know what? We just don't need Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac. Well, they're scapegoating, right? But so that they don't have to make real reforms, like substantive right. reforms, to Wall Street. But the reality is, is that the middle class in this country has been largely built upon the concept of home ownership, and there is nothing. There's no 401k. There's no, you know, pension plan that can take the place of that wealth generating mechanism or savings mechanism. And no one ex has contributed more to that, as far as institutions are concerned, than Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. The best thing on the table right now is what we have. Take what we have and fix it. So Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac weren't capitalized enough. Put more capital into them. That's all they're going to do with the new agencies, is require more capitalization. Those reserves, whether it was the private sector that they've been proposing or Fannie Freddie reserves, still won't survive a catastrophic event like we had, a recession. We know how to do this right. We know what the mistakes were. We've cleaned up the laws in terms of what mortgage companies and banks can do in terms of lending. We know we need to have capital reserves. We know we probably need to limit market share. We know we need to have strong oversight and transparency. Do all those things. But do it with a system we have in place that guarantees fair and equal access to all hardworking Americans looking to become homeowners and to build wealth.